Oh, I forgot. Okay. Luna is back to Zoe Luna's part. Embarrassing three uh, birth chart analysis. Okay. Venus and Cancer would be a mommy's girl, a mommy's guy, whatever the fuck. That you, anybody with Venus and Cancer, someone always wants their mother's approval of who their date is or spouse or whatever. And if they don't get that approval, they feel like they shouldn't really be with that person and scoot them to the side. But still, they want that family-oriented thing. Like, if your mom doesn't like one of your friends, you're kind of like, well, I love you, but you're still going to be on the outside of my life because my life is like home and my relationships are like home. Bring everybody home. And, like, that would be, like, a Venus and a mother you're nourishing thing and, a, you know, welcome you in and make you feel like you're you're adopted and that you're at home and stuff. And, like, things that uh, the partner doesn't know to appreciate, didn't probably notice that the Venus and Cancer was be for them. Like, hello. I'm very loyal because Cancer's, like, the most loyalist sign that cleans the past and like you can't unmother a cancer you can't be a mom to a cancer whatever and like venus and cancer is like just wonderful like I, at the beginning of i was trying to make this uh, the craft legacy barbie thing i just thought she was already this kind mothering nourishing person i didn't even look at her chart yet and then like i finally just looked at it uh for today and like I wanted to, uh, go on and on about it or whatever, but, um, yeah, so I found out a lot that I didn't find out through the websites of trying to look for her chart, because those are all freaking wrong, all her charts out in there that I looked up are so wrong until, like, I got the, the real one from the source, so, um, <laughs> Such a creep, freak, whatever, but, like, like, wow, and, and, and it's so cool that she likes the same things I do, like, Black the Vampire Slayer, the 90s and stuff, like, re representing a good person, that is so beautiful and amazing, but anyways, I'm embarrassing, so, like, oh, well, um, but, yeah, Venus and Cancer is, like, superbly my favorite, uh, placement for somebody to be in a relationship with or whatever, like, whatever, Anyways, yeah, I thought that was so cool, a spin of a 10th house Virgo, and my 4th house is in Virgo, and my 10th house is in Pisces, blah, 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 my palace is in Pisces, my Venus and it, well, my Venus is in Aries, conjunct Mars in Aries, conjunct palace Pisces, and the 10th house Pisces, and then my Neptune's in whatever, it's not about me at all, but like, that's cool, because she's such a rising, I'm doing my cuss gets rising, to play her to yin yangies, yangies, and that's cool beans her eighth house is in cancer my eighth house is in capricorn my jupiter's in aquarius ninth house her jupiter's in a leo the eighth house polarities of second mediumness but my mercury moon and sun is all in the ninth house aquarius my sun sign is pisces lunar mortis pisces training pisces on the cusp of aquarius though i do have the cusp gemini cusp gets rising lunar mortis gemini rising Moon and just Aquarius, whatever. Her moon was in uh, 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 she was moon in Gemini. Yeah, that's crazy. I usually end up being friends with the moon and Gemini, but all of a sudden they will snap and they're just like this freaking crazy person that I'm wondering what happened to you? Where's the other face? You know, and this turns out just like they have this like, schizophrenia thing, and then they come back to their own, back to reality, come to the their senses. Because a moon and Gemini could have irrational emotions, and when they're logical, they will be very cold and stuff. But like, whatever, all this other stuff that's going on in her chart's really warm and great and groovy and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's a different person, a, a different being, a different vessel. It works, functions as you and them and whatever so it's going to be a lot different on somebody else and i i always tell people what i think about these placements doesn't mean i'm 100 percent correct or anything like that 
or even on a clue of being correct. It's just that what my experience is, what I've matched up with these people that I've read their charts and figured out how the fucking douchebags they are. And obviously, I've met all such a much douchebags and filled with rejection in my life. It's filled with being this, um, whatever. All kinds of experience of abuse and shit. Like, it's ridiculous. So, like, I've learned a lot about the bad side of people. So, uh, you dig in with astrology, you can see and uncover the crystal and the rock side and the hard side of people. And, like, their life's, like, struggling. Of course, I'm going to tell and point out the things that people struggle in and all the misery. And just be compassionate about all that. You know, just want to really love and put them in a good place and whatever the fuck or whatever. But just pushing them down first and tell them they're the f why they're bad. Bad. No, no, no. And then, or they're actually so great that they never had to be, hey, obedient or whatever to this sign or whatever to become this flourishing moment of their personality to be finally this turned over higher side of self, you know what I mean, whatever, you know, like, ugh, whatever, if that makes any sense, or whatever, common sense, or logic, or nothing, I don't know, I guess I should just shut up, and just keep it a mystery, and just keep it just like, ugh, to your own, to each, to your fucking own thoughts, on anything, just everything, just free to think, free will to do whatever about anything. But anyways, yeah, that was just the big thing. It was just Venus and Cancer kind of just um, whatever talking to myself. Oh, fuck it. I don't know. Whatever. But in the 8th house as well, Venus in the 8th house means that you're looking for a sugar daddy. You have opportunities to get sugar daddies. No offense. I don't even know you. I don't, ca I don't care if I'm wrong. It's okay. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I'm dumb. But that's what I say about it. If Venus in 8th house is 8th house does rule other people's money and stuff. But, like, it would probably, it's not, like, so mean to say that about people. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, like, no, just, just whatever. I'm just, I roast charts. That's what I do. It's just for fun. You know, but it's personally. Because that's what it is. Whatever. So, like, okay, so I'm on tangent now, uh, part three. And then, and then I'll probably get up and be like, oh, my God, I forgot to say something. Fifth House Aries was, um uh, you, uh, the, the creative craft projects that you do on your own and teaching others how to, like, get with it, be an acting coach is probably what you could do, be, and wherever your Neptune was, your Neptune was in, um, I remember, but now I forgot, and Neptune is cameras, Neptune is directing, being a director, like, that's what you want to be, you're going to make a movie, with your creativeness, your fifth, fourth house is a Pisces, so you can do everything and be everyone and every character. Like you make your own movie, just do it. Your YouTube is it's in its own. Yes, awesome. It's gonna be perfect. No matter what's the tenth house, Virgo, ta-da, voila, yes. Um, the Abyss, twelfth house, Scorpio. Are you kidding me? What? My twelfth house is in Taurus. Our feet or polarity of each other, yings and yangs, whatever, high fives, low fives, stuff like that. Okay, okay. Uh, weirdo to the fifth dimensional extreme. Ah. So, I don't know, um, just keep it talking, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, Okay, so, um, part three is just another mess, um, so I just winged it and just did that. That's what I did. <laughs> so apprehensive of even posting, but I'm just all about just getting over with, hurry it up, just put it out there, because I could always redo it another year or something. I don't know. April Fool's. I did your bird chart. Ew, it sucks. I'm sorry. Whatever. But I don't know. Just, just the interesting things and like just things that you can talk about, I guess, like bird charts. I don't know. My excuse. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that was so cool 
that I finally found out her chart. Yay! She's so groovy, and I got to do it. Thank you ever so kindly for letting me do that. Like, ugh, too much. Ah, uh, hand me something to do for you, and <laughs> if I mess up, sorry, I don't know. I don't know. I feel such a loser, but that's okay. I guess I'll just do that awkward, weird thing. Oh, well, so I don't know. I do people star charts and I do psychic readings, but like not everyone's readable. So that's sad, but that's so interesting that you have fourth house spices means that you might actually be able to like Virgo risings are usually readable for some reason. Even if I'm the Pisces, um, retard like all coming to the, the, the seventh house, which is like, I'm no, embarrassing, because the seventh house is an embarrassing, bashful place to be in, whatever. Um, like, Virgo rising people, that's, I mean, that's, I can't go on that tangent, because that should be a separate video of people's charts. I haven't, I, I found out they're all fire signs, the craft legacy, the group of four girls, and so is the mother, Helen, she's a freaking Aries, hello. They're all the fire signs playing all the four elements, that is so groovy. Yes, they should be the craft with all water signs being trying to play all the four elements too. Yeah, you know, but I don't want to talk about that. It's about how the first one was, well, you know, how Neff Campbell is an air sign. Uh, Ferzik Burlick is a air sign. Um, Neff Campbell is a Libra. Uh, Ferzik Burlick is a Gemini. Um, the... Robin, um, Tanya, um, is an air sign Gemini, and then Aquarius, um, um, oh my god, I don't remember everybody's name anymore, uh, the girl who played Rochelle, and the girl who played Shara, Sarah, yeah, that's funny, they're all air signs, so that's air, and now it's the fire signs, the craft legacies to play them. Next should be water, and the next should be air, or something like that. I could be a crop girl. <laughs> yes! If Luna says, Zoe Luna says that she can be a crop girl, and it, it happened for her, maybe I could be. <laughs> yes. Or at least be cameo in there. I don't know. That'd be pretty hilarious. Groovy. That's so interesting. They're all air signs, the first one. Now it's all fire signs, the second movie. There could be a simultaneous third Pisces, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and, you know, extra water sign, whatever. That's funny. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. The trends who played Zoe Luna is supposed to be the Earth Taurus sign. That's so funny because Taurus is my favorite sign. Um, and then, um... Her name's get Frankie, who played the, well, Zoe Luna played the Earth sign, Taurus, and, uh, Frankie, uh, played the Air sign, okay, but she's actually an Aries, and Zoe Luna's a Leo, okay, Tabby is a fire sign Sagittarius, and Helen is, uh, um, Lily's mother who is an Aries in real life and uh Lily is a Leo in real life and apparently Zolina said she's just fertilizing that's exciting there's just, just that's so interesting so they're all fire signs groovy oh my god and Gideon which is like wait no that's not Gideon okay I mean duh Ad, the guy who plays Adam plays in X Files. I don't, I, I can't remember his name. I go by astrology. He's a Leo. He's fire sign. So that's funny. And then ugh, the other boy. Anyways, I don't leave anybody out. I don't like doing that. I don't. I don't like you know the Aquarius people don't like to leave anybody out. They they, they join everybody in and everything. All that kind of stuff. But I'm Pisces, because Christ, whatever, whatever, I don't know. Ugh. That's funny. So, I have a lot of things to say, but I'm, I'm not going to say them, because it should be individual videos, instead of be like, a oh, part to one, right there. Because <laughs> I didn't finish. Oops, didn't finish. Should just, I don't 
editing is horrible on my feeders. They're so horrible. My video, my cameras are horrible. Uh, so it's all, it's enough life for me to do all these videos and probably for every YouTuber, you know, I mean, whatever. Okay, there goes that. Each of these, like, minutes. Okay, well, sorry about that. Um, toodles, I don't know. Um, I'm out of ease. I'm a Pisces. I'm either here or there or whatever. I don't know. I'm a lot of air and water. So, it is what it is. But I'm February 18th, 1985. 1 p.m. Um, ah, just put me wherever the United States is. So, there you go. Um, toodles, bye, peace, love, chicken grease, and, ew, chicken grease, ew, whatever, chicken feathers, bye, or whatever, vegan, alien, fairies, ma, bye, toodles, <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, um, oh, do you want to see my dog? He's actually her. <laughs> she, her name is Peggy, and she is a Cancer, Scorpio, Rising, Moon, and Capricorn, and her 10th house is in Virgo, just like Zoe, Luna, and she's 4th house Pisces, oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, well, toodles. I don't know, I forgot, um, what else I was going to say that they kind of matched chart placements. I'm not think I don't know if her Venus is in cancer. I'm not sure. I forgot what her Venus is. Oh my god. Let's look all that up again. Oh wait, out toodles. That's that.